So we're now going to prove the sum or addition rule for limits. What does it say? So if f of x tends towards L, as x tends towards A, and g of x tends towards M, as x tends towards A, then all of this implies that f of x plus g of x tends towards L plus M, as x towards, tends towards A. So let's look at the proof of this. So what do we need to show? Well, first of all, let's take a look at what we know. So we know that these things hold. So in terms of the definition, so we know that whatever epsilon we take, we can get f of x epsilon close to L by making x close to A. So let's call this epsilon one. So for every epsilon one, there exists a delta one such that for every x in the domain, except for A, we have, we can write this a bit sloppily like such that x minus a less than delta one, x is not equal to a. These two things we imply that f of x minus l is less than epsilon one. And correspondingly here, it's just the same. And what do we want to show? So we want to show for every epsilon, there exists a delta such that when I make this thing here, delta small, but not a, this implies that f of x plus g of x minus l minus m is less than epsilon. And just as with sequences, it's a bit, <laughs> the danger here is to get lost in all of these epsilons and deltas. So let's change the color of some of them, just to emphasize, let's make them green. So here we have a green epsilon, a green delta, so that when we're less than the green delta, this thing here becomes less than the green epsilon. So this thing here is arbitrary, fixed but unknown. So he's the guy we're challenged with. This is our goal to find him so that all of, all of this holds. And all of this is our tool. So we know that whatever number we put in here, this works. And we know that whatever number we put in here, this works. So if I put in epsilon equal to epsilon one equals to one here, I will get a delta one. If I put epsilon one equal to green epsilon, I will get a delta one here. If I put this thing here equal to green epsilon plus one, I will get a delta here, right? So this thing, I, this is a machine or two machines that I know work. And this is a machine I want to prove that works, okay? And here it's really important for me to think of this as being uh, an arbitrary, unknown number, but he's fixed and I can use him. I can put him into here, I can put him into here. Now, what do we need? Well, we need to make this difference and this difference so small that when we add up this, they add up to epsilon. And how can we do this? This thing here is what we need to compute, right? And again, as always, we should think of this as something that we may need a chain of equalities and inequalities to, to uh, figure out. So let's go down here so we can compute. And then we start to look at this expression. F of X plus G of X minus L minus M. And now let's just connect L to F and M to G because they're guys that kind of belong together. So I'm getting here F of X minus L plus G of X minus M like this. Now I can put parentheses like this, and then I can use the triangle inequality. So then I'm getting f of x minus l in absolute value alone, and g of x minus m in absolute value alone. So suddenly this expression pops up, and this expression pops up. Now what can I do? Well, I have here my green epsilon. He's arbitrary, he's fixed, so he's given to me, even if I don't exactly know what he is. And I want to figure out what I can do to make this thing now less than the green epsilon. But notice here, whatever choice I do for epsilon one and whatever choice I do for epsilon two, I'm guaranteed the existence of deltas so that this expression here and this expression here are smaller than epsilon one and epsilon two respectively, once these guys get sufficiently small. And I can put in here one and one. Would that help me? Well, I get would get this less than one and this one, so the result would be less than two. Well, okay, so then I beat every epsilon challenge bigger than two, but well, who knows? I may be challenged with something smaller than two. 
but why not put here this to be green epsilon divided by two and this to be green epsilon divided by two. So then I know there exists such guys so that when these guys are smaller than whatever this is and whatever this is, I don't know what it is, but I'm guaranteed that there exists such numbers. Then this well, will be smaller than this and this will be smaller than this, okay? So put epsilon one equal to epsilon two equal to green epsilon half. This gives existence of delta one, delta two, such that when x minus a is smaller than delta one and x minus a is smaller than delta two and x minus a is not zero, these three things imply that what? Well, basically that this is less than epsilon half, whoops, and this other thing is less than epsilon half, so I get epsilon here. So all of this is less than epsilon. Yay, I win. So let's just write it down here. So this means that f of x plus g of x minus l minus m is less than epsilon, which is exactly what I needed. Yay. And now you can say, oops, you've chosen two deltas. Is that good? Well, sure, because I can say that the real choice I'm making is that this is smaller than the minimum of delta one and delta two. Whatever is the smallest of those two guys, I choose him, meaning that this is less than both of them since it's less than the smallest. And of course here, I'm putting this condition. So this thing here is my choice for delta. It's the smallest of two strictly positive numbers. And so it's strictly positive itself. And once I have this, this computation works and I'm done.